Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Wednesday, not Thursday. So I'm sorry we're coming at you a little bit early, a little day early. Um, I had some stuff come up that I'm going to have to attend to tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to live stream tomorrow. So we thought rather than not live streaming at all, let's at least give it a shot and we'll just kind of dive in early today. I'm just doing some work on Snow Bear today, and so I figured I'd just bring you guys in and we can I show you where I'm at, what I'm doing. Um, if you guys were with me yesterday on Facebook, you'll know that um, I was adding some color separations on the paint of uh, the character of, of the bear, and the, the polar bear and snow bear. And that's what I'm continuing to do today. I want to show you a few other things that we're going to be doing by adding shadows and, you know, all these little elements that we're going to be doing add a little bit of dimensionality to our, our character that we've been working on. Um, if you guys have been watching over the last several weeks... Um, you'll, you guys will have seen me kind of start this thing from the very beginning when we just started doing rough animation and, you know, taking it through, you know, the key animation and then doing the in-betweens and now we're up to the painting of it now. And, uh, and also, you know, I've talked about the backgrounds in the past. So what we're trying to do is just work up this 17 second shot as kind of a little teaser that we can put out there while we, while we make Snow Bear. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So once again, I'm here. Uh, unfortunately, Nick is not going to be available. My business partner, Nick, he is um, he's getting ready to fly to Hawaii tomorrow. So he's going on vacation for two weeks in Hawaii. Uh, well deserved. And uh, so that's what he's doing. But I've got Dustin right here. Come on over. Say hi, Dustin. There he is. Right. Hi. Boom, boom. <laughs> and uh, Dustin will be uh, answering questions, and so we'll be doing all that. Or relaying questions to me. Or you. relaying questions to me. Yes, there you go. Perfect. So, um, but anyway, let me, I, I just want to take you through kind of what we've been doing. Um, so you guys have been with me, or hopefully most of you have been with me. You've seen how we did the animation, the rough animation test. Let me kind of break it down. Uh, I'm just going to, we'll just do a review of what we've done over the last few weeks. I'm going to get rid of the background real quick. And I'm going to get rid of, uh, where am I? I'm going to get rid of this paint layer right here. And um, so this is, this is just the rough animation. Whoops, oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Forgot to turn off this other part. Where is it? Right here. So that's the color set. So here's the rough animation. This is what we've done so far. And... Uh, um, we this took a couple of weeks to get going. I wasn't able to work on it, you know, day in and day out. It took, you know, I had to go away and come back. I've been going out of town and everything, but we finally got the animation done, and that's the animation. So the next step was to get that background done, and I got the background laid in. And if you guys remember me talking about the style of the backgrounds that we were wanting to do, I wanted to match, I wanted to match the style of the animation itself. I'm not going in and cleaning up all the drawings. I want to keep it rough. And so, therefore, I want the backgrounds to have a rough feel as well. And so that's the attempt here with an also kind of a watercolor, uh, gouache watercolor background feel, painting feel. And so we're going to try to emulate that in the uh, paint as well. So the first thing we wanted to do was get that, that base color of the polar bear uh, laid in there. And so that's what this is. And so it's a slight off-white. Uh, it's not pure white. It's off-white. Um, like regular polar bears. Actually, I want to jump over real quick just to show you. This is a polar bear, obviously. And, um, you know, everyone thinks of polar bears as being these bright white uh, bears. And they are to, an, to, you know, to a degree. But they've got a lot of, you know, other colors modeling in them. And that's what we're going to try to do uh, with the snow bear, with the polar bear here. So I've got this base white color. And then what I'm doing... Uh, today is I'm laying over a color step. If you look at the legs, how they go into kind of a brownish color in here under the neck and under the legs here, that's what I'm working on adding to the snow bear. And I'll show you, uh, here's the base color. So there's, that's the base color laid in and you can see it looks pretty stark. And so there's a couple of things missing. We want, I want to lay in that brownish tint to the fur. And then after that, we're going to start laying in some shadows. And I need to animate all of that onto the character. And so this is why it takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. And I'm going to play for you. Where is it? Here is the... There's, the, there's that color laid in. You see? 
but but there's a process to this here it's all blurred I've got the opacity pulled back and you can see that it fits really nicely let me jump over to the layer to the other test that I'm working on where I'm actually doing the separations and you can see the way we do this is I actually do these as hard lines I animate these hard lines as the character is animating so I go straight ahead and animate these on and then I fill I fill it like you see here and then I go in and I blur that and that's how we get it to sit so this is what I'm doing today I'm gonna be drawing all of this stuff and then we're gonna fill it in so that let me jump back to the beginning here so that when when what we'll see is you'll get this kind of feel so when I jump back over to our other test this is how it looks okay so that's what I'm shooting for overall and then just real quick before we do any questions I just want to show you one more thing and then I've got one more layer that I'm going to be putting on so here there's the, the brown laid on and then I'm doing a shadow layer on top of that and just like I animated that brown as the bear was jumping around I'm going to be animating that shadow as he moves around the only difference is with the shadow that light source is stationary so I have to imagine that shadow animating over the body and so in some places he'll look like this here's another here's another quick example of what he might look like so that's what I'm working on over the next couple of days and so we figured we'd do that today so there's my long-winded <laughs> explanation of what I'm doing and uh, so why don't we go ahead and dive in go ahead Dustin um, is the last part of the animation where the bears, uh, where the bear puts his head in the snow, is that on twos or ones? Because everything else is on ones, right? Uh, not everything is on ones. Actually, when he when he stops, when he poses, and then he goes back into jumping around, those poses go on to twos. Then it goes back to ones. So I, I jump back and forth between ones and twos all the time. Uh, what? Um, oh. What program is this? Uh, oh, yeah. It? Okay, thanks. So this is um, this is TV paint animation. Um, uh, go ahead and just Google TV paint and their website comes up. Normally Nick is there to give you the link, but uh, Dustin and I don't have that ability. I, unless Dustin can do it. Can you type in? Are you able to? Maybe not. Uh, uh, he's, he's doing the questions at the same time. But type in TV paint. You'll be able to get it. Um, it's a, it's a great program. That's what I, that's what I've been using for the last, I don't know, five years. And, um, and I love it. It for me, if you want to do an, digital animation, like I'm doing digital hand-drawn animation and the style of old paper hand-drawn animation, then TV paint is your best bet. Um, it's exactly it, for me, it's, it's just like working, uh, on paper, except I'm, I'm working digitally. And then the other thing too, is I'll show you, I'm working on... This is my Wacom Cintiq. So it's a big pen display. And um, what's really great is when I get into my work field, the, paper, the, the drawing field is the same size as the paper I used to use, which is really cool. So it's just like working on paper for me, um, except I'm, I'm working digitally. So I, I really like that. So this is a Wacom Cintiq. It's 27 inches. Uh, it's a 4K screen, which is really great. And uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, have you ever inked your animation in general in TV Paint? Have I ever inked it? Um, I we well we've done. That's kind of what I'm doing now. I haven't done the. I haven't used the inking function, if that's what you're asking. Um, but uh, let me jump over here. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of doing a couple of things at the same time. I, uh, I, I kind of build things up kind of in an old school way. Um, there's different, one of the things I love about TV paint is that you can do a lot of different things in different ways. And so I'm doing, I'm handling this as an animation layer. And, um, but there, you know, I'm going to be doing self inking lines and a lot of different things to give that bear its dimensionality. I'm new to uh, animation. What is ones and twos? Okay, so ones and twos. Uh, all that means is that ones is one drawing for every frame. And there's 24 frames per second. 
So that means there's 24 drawings, 24 different drawings for every second that goes by. That's a lot of drawing. But we use that. These are all on ones all through here. And that's for fast action. When you see him jumping around, I need to do a new drawing for every frame. But when he slows down, like this, then I'm able to get away with doing one drawing for every two frames. Your eye doesn't quite pick it up as long as he's moving slowly. See how he's moving slowly through here. So I can get away by, you can see, if you look at my timeline, it's one, 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 twos. But if I, when I let that play, twos right there, you don't really feel it. Then it goes back to ones and then twos right there. Now here, I kept it on twos because I felt like the, the, the action was just slow enough and I decided to go ahead and keep it on twos all the, all the rest of the way through. But that fast action where he's jumping around, I needed to put that on ones. And you can see that fluidity. And that's why, you know, uh, that's why we have that ability to jump over to ones in order to get that fluidity. So that's the difference between ones and twos. All it means is ones is one drawing for every frame. And then twos is one drawing for every two frames. Can you make a, a tutorial for animation, but like really basic like you did with Photoshop? Uh, yes, I could do that. Yes, I will do that. So here what I'm doing is he's he's falling backwards and I'm thinking about those legs, his belly, the, his front, the forearms, his chest, and up under his chin. I want that all to kind of go into a, a little bit of a brownish tint. So that's the outline. So I have to imagine that as he animates. Okay, I have to move that for each drawing and I do it very kind of, I do it very quickly uh, straight ahead. And what I mean by straight ahead is I'm just going from drawing to drawing straight ahead and, excuse me, and animating it. Because each drawing is so different from the last, I don't really have to worry about being exact. And I'll show you what I mean. Could you show, show some of your key poses and breakdowns for the jumping around? Yes, I'll do that in just a second. Right now I'm focusing on trying to get the, uh, let me erase this back, get these color separations done. Basically, the for the jumping around, every drawing was a key. Um, I went straight ahead, and you'll notice every drawing is different. So I went straight ahead on twos and animated it, and then went back through and in between it, one drawing per, between each drawing and put it on ones. So there really wasn't a whole lot of specific breakdowns and keys. It was just straight ahead animation. Just like I'm doing here. You're going to see these shapes change quite a bit. What do you think is the biggest mistake young artists uh, make in their portfolios for animation? Um, when I look at portfolios from young artists, the biggest mistakes that I see, if they're looking for a job, this is if they're looking for a job, the biggest mistake that I see is that they include everything they've ever done. And that includes the really basic stuff from art school, like walk cycles and things like bouncing balls. You know, if you're looking for a, a job as a professional, Nobody wants to see your bouncing ball test. No one wants to see your walk cycle test. They want to see acting. They want to see what you can contribute to a film. And putting your bouncing ball test in there doesn't show them anything other than you know how to do a bouncing ball. And so my biggest piece of advice is, you know, make sure you have professional quality work in your portfolio. And if you don't, then you need to take the time and do it and put it in there. It's just something you are gonna to have to do. Have you tried different nibs for different fields? If so, which one's your favorite? Uh, as far as nib nibs for my Cintiq, I'm using my favorite right now and it's a, it's gray. It's like a, it's like a little felt tip, like a, um, I don't know if you can, will that focus? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll focus. If I get closer, <laughs> it won't focus, but it's a, um, it's a gray tip. Let me see if I can put it there. If I put it out here, you can see it. 
um, and it's felt tip and it grabs the glass just a little bit better so it feels a little bit more like I'm uh, I don't know why it just did that it feels a little bit more like I'm you know working on you know a, a, a grittier surface which I like it's more resistant exactly uh, do you know where uh, where I can get TV paint animation for free on Mac? For free? Yeah. No, you gotta pay for it, man. You don't get TV paint for free. What do you think about <laughs> Apple Pencil? I love Apple Pencil. Um, but I want to go back. I want to go back to the, that question about getting TV paint for free. Um, oh boy. No, no, it's just you know, the, the, don't pirate it. You know, these, these people are in, they're, they're creating a great product um, and they're working hard at it. And, you know, you get, you don't get stuff for free. You got to pay for it. Um, there are student discounts and you can get really good discounts. Um, but, um, you know, I have a lot of people that ask me, hey, I want your, I want your lessons for free. And I would love to give them for free, but this is how I make my living. And this is how TV paint, that's is how they make their living as well. So, um, you know, we, we live in a capitalist society. You got to pay for what you want to get. But um, what was the other question? Um, Sorry, I just had to go off on a little rant there. All right. There we go. I'm coming up. There we go. And this comes in. Uh, the other question was, uh, uh, what do you think about the uh, Apple Pencil? Oh, Apple Pencil. I'm sorry. Yeah, Apple. Pe I love Apple Pencil. Um, when I go on the road, um, if I decide to bring my, my, um, ah, I don't like that. If I decide to bring my, uh, my tablet, um, I, I love it. It works great, actually. You're coming here to the Philippines, right? Icon Manila 2018? I, I am. I think that's October, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I am definitely going to be there this year. So I was there a couple of years ago, and um, and I loved it. had a great time with you guys, and I can't wait to see you again. I love Manila. So, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Uh, when you do the Shadows of the Bear, do you need to know only the basics in physics, or do you need... To know everything in physics. Well, I mean, I think I don't think you need to be you don't need to be a, a you know a, a scholar in physics, but I, I think it it helps to understand how light works and, and that sort of thing. And but it's just it's just basics, just understanding how light falls on the form, and um, and then you know go from there. How was Virginia? Virginia was awesome. Thank you very much. Had a great time. Visiting Vedanta, my girlfriend, and we, uh, I went out to a place called um, the Virginia Living Museum where they had uh, Virginia wildlife on display and uh, live. And so I was able to get out and do some drawing and uh, draw some live Virginia wildlife, which was awesome. So you can see I don't labor this, I'm just going, I'm going pretty quickly. How do you keep your lines so clean? I, I've been doing this a long, long time. <laughs> and I, uh, I've, one of the biggest things I discipline myself early on in doing is trying to avoid the sketchy line. I don't do this. I try to do f long, fluid lines. And it, it definitely uh, helps with speed. Um, you're able to go a lot faster. What's the difference when doing digital paintings in TV Paint versus Photoshop? Would you use TV Paint instead of Photoshop for digital art? Uh, no, I use TV Paint for animation. That's it's an animation program. That's what it is. Um, you can do illustration with it if you want, but it's really it's really built for animation for me personally. And uh, my brother, Travis Blaze, uh, if you don't know who he is, who he is look him up. Uh, he has uh, sketch to animate uh, on his social media. 
Uh, he'll use TV paint for illustrations uh, a lot. Uh, actually, I don't want to I'll bring that down. And uh, but for me, I, I prefer Photoshop. And um, but as far as animation goes, I love my TV paint. So you can see because his, he's belly up, we're going to see a lot more of that brown. And I want to get that to come around. And then I'm going to come in here. And that goes up to his butt. <clears throat> All straight ahead. No laboring. So here, if I scroll, you can see it just animates right back. And what I'm going to do later on is I'll go in with my fill bucket, and I will fill all this in. Then we'll go ahead and blur it, and you'll see how it works. What are you going to demo again on your um, on your animation desk with your pe pencil and paper? Uh, I will do that soon. Right now, I'm focused on getting the the uh, snow bear done, and um, uh, so once I get that done. Uh, I'll have some freer time to go back and do some more traditional work. I will definitely go back and do some stuff on my desk, you know, in the coming weeks. Here we go. Well, let it save. I've got it on automatic save. I've, I used to, <laughs> if I don't have it on automatic save, I lose stuff all the time. What are the extra difficulties if you try to get into a company overseas? Um, the difficulties of trying to get into a company overseas, well, um, the, first of all, there's the obvious. There's time differences, which, you know, which are that can be kind of difficult. You know, the difference between London and, and Los Angeles, for instance, there's nine hours right there. That's a full day. And so, you know, we, we had studios overseas, a lot of times when we were working at Disney that were working with us and, you know, you have to work, you have to deal with that. Um, sometimes there's language barriers. Sometimes there's, um, you know, there's a lot of different issues that can get in the way that can make things, you know, that can not, that can just hinder, th slow things down a little bit. But at the end of the day, the artwork, the, the talent and the, you know, the quality of what you want to produce, that remains the same. That doesn't change. That's universal. Do you ever write a book about your art, knowledge, experience, advice? Um, we probably will write a book at some point. Uh, Nick Birch and myself have been talking about it. We What we'll probably do is take um, some of the lessons that I've produced and turn them into book form and then add some anecdotes of you know some of my experiences and, and that sort of thing. Do you still work on traditional Wacom tablets since you're using Cintiq Media? Traditional Wacom tab tablet. Um, oh, you mean like a like a regular tablet? Um, not very often. If I go on the road uh, and I'm giving a lecture, then I'll use it then if I don't have a Cintiq available. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to China um, at the beginning of March, and I'll be in China uh, the entire month of March, and I'll be using a tablet the whole time I'm there. So I still use it every once in a while. What do you think of Cartoon Saloon's uh, movies? I love for... Cartoon Saloon's movies. Are you looking forward to Wolf Walkers? Yes. Yes. Um, very much so. Oh, flying, uh, it's Flying Snake's uh, birthday today. Flying Snakes? <laughs> Happy birthday, Flying Snakes. Uh, have you been using Krita for animation drawings? No. I'm using TV Paint. So you can see that belly's coming up. Actually, I'll do this. Uh, how long have you uh, did you work for Disney, and uh, what movies uh, were they? I worked for Disney for 21 years. 
And I worked on two animated shorts. Roller coaster. They were Roger Rabbit shorts. One was called Roller Coaster Rabbit. The other one was called Trail Mix Up. I worked on the films I worked on were The Rescuers Down Under, um, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, uh, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Mulan, uh, and I co-directed Brother Bear. Am I missing one? No, I don't think I'm missing any. Yeah. So there's his leg coming up. Rescuer, rescuers down under. Yeah, rescuers down under. Uh, what charity did you uh, donate your hair to? Wigs for kids. Or no, locks of love. Locks, locks of love. Locks, locks of love or wigs for kids. It was locks of love or wigs for kids. I I got I actually go back and forth between the two. Now that and how did that work? Do you just go to the barber and just tell them I'm donating the this hair? Yeah, uh, a lot of salons will. Um, they. There we go. Hold on. Sorry. They um, they've already got it set up and they actually do, like a delivery. You know, every couple of weeks or so, they'll take the hair that they've cut from people that want to donate and they send it all out in one big batch. And that's kind of what happens, you know, with the salon that I go to. Salon. It's the, there's a couple of ladies that cut my hair when I do cut my hair. When um, you do. Yeah, when I do. Um, but they, um, they, they sent it out for me. I think it was Locks of Love. Are there are there salons in the downtown area? Yep, yep, right uh right off of Rich, oh. right on the corner. Cool. There we go. So if I scroll this, you can see him rolling over. There Where we can go. I watch this animation when it's done? Uh, well, when we, when we it's going to take a year before we get this all done. Uh, this one shot that I'm animating, this is just a teaser that we're doing for the full cartoon. The full piece will be about eight minutes long. And um, uh, we're not we're going to screen it at uh, some various film festivals. Uh, right now, we're just not sure which ones yet. And uh, our biggest focus right now is just to get it done. And then once we get once we get it done, then we'll start focusing on where we're going to screen it. Do you think storyboard artists should have more animated or drawing based skills? Uh, drawing based. Well, it's it's hard to say with with storyboard artists because you know as a storyboard artist you have to kind of take into consideration all of the disciplines. Um, it's really tough. I mean, storyboard artists they need to be great cinematographers because you need to think about that shot and cutting and and you know the psychology of. The, the compositions that you're creating. Um, and you've got to be actors because you, you need to act your characters in their poses. and um, Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, you have to kind of be a jack of all trades. What was it like working with uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Brother Bear? Um, Joaquin was great. Um, you know, he's he's uh, he's a genius. And he he produced for us some really great material. Um, he was uh, he was he was awesome. Uh, which is the uh, which is the best uh, Disney animated movie for you? Uh, like which which do you think is your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. Well, my favorite my favorite Disney animated movie. I have two, and um, and that's uh, Bambi and Pinocchio. Uh, but to have worked on, um, it's Beauty and the Beast, uh, Lion King, The Lion King, and Brother Bear. Uh, which right. app would be great for uh, beginner animators? Where, where, and where would it be a good place to start? Well, if you're, an, if you're a beginning animator, and if it's something that you really want to do, I recommend getting in there with TV Paint. Like I said, you can get... A cheaper student license and um, 
it's still a bit expensive, but if it's something you're going to stick with, it's worth the money. Um, you can't go wrong. And it's, it's a great program to, you know, I'll be using this program for, for years to come, you know, creating my films. Uh, are you going to make the entire short film on TV paint? Yes, the entire short will be done on TV paint. All of it. So once again, he's rolling over. And he's going to go, boof, plop right down. Just... Nowadays, there's a lot of discussion about uh, representation on media. When you worked at Disney, did you have discussions like that a lot, or is it more recent thing? Representations on media? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry, I don't know what that question means. There's been a lot of discussions of representation on media. Um, Maybe, uh, if you're talking about C, are you talking about CG versus 2D? Um, we talked about that all the time, but I'm not sure if that's the question you're asking. If you uh, can you rephrase that? What would your uh, desert island film meal and book be? <laughs> <laughs> like if you're stuck in a in a desert, what would those be? Uh, hold on. Uh, well, it's it's either uh, Oh Brother Where Out Thou or The Big Lebowski is for my movies. And um, oh, food? I like everything. I eat everything. I really do. Uh, oh, that's a hard one. You know, I'm sure I could find something on that island that I would like. Just as much as any, I'm, trust me, I eat anything. And, it, it, you know, wherever I go, I'm eating whatever the locals eat. So I've eaten bugs, and I've eaten guts, and I've, <laughs> I've eaten it all, and I've enjoyed it. So, um, and then books. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, there's, for me, all anything by Jack London I love. You know, all the big adventure books. That's what I always read as a kid. And I still go back to that. Um, I love Jack London books. I've got a big collection. Is TVP... TVP? TVP. Hey, David Pate. <laughs> uh, is TV paint easy for, uh, for self-learn? Or do you recommend other programs that are easy to use for newbies? No, I think I think you can pick it up. TV Paint you can pick up literally in just about twenty minutes as far as just basic animation. And there's a lot of videos. I've got I've I've got six videos on my YouTube channel that I've created on the use of TV Paint. So just on my YouTube channel alone, um, you can learn how to use TV Paint. So uh, and there's a lot of great videos out there beyond mine. I need reviews on my anim on my animations. Can you do it? I can't, and I get that question a lot, and I'm sorry that I can't. Um, there's Please. too many, <laughs> there's, too, there's too many people out there that are actually uh, requesting, and this right here that I'm doing is really taking up all of my time, and so I just don't have time to review uh, portfolios at this time. But it is something we're talking about doing, and uh, we want to do it in the future. So be patient, and uh, we'll definitely be trying to. If you had to choose between Bambi and Pinocchio to have worked on, which one would you pick? Bambi. Bambi. For sure. And, and animated the character of Bambi. Mother! Yeah. Have you ever been to Kyoto? It's the most stunning city. Yes, I, uh, yes, I have, actually. I've gone and I oh. drew the golden, uh, the golden Pagoda. Out in the pond. The jealousy is real, right? Yes, there. I have. Uh, uh, my questions are just rolling so fast. Sorry. Ooh, what fast questions? All right. 
Uh, what practice do you recommend to get better at animating? Do it, animate, animate a lot. Um, you know, the best thing you can do is, you know, really, um, get as many acting scenes as you can. And, you know, one of the coolest, and, and you can do it with TV paint very easily. One of the coolest exercises you can do is find lines from movies, really classic lines, lines that, that you love, um, and frame grab it or, uh, uh, grab it, you know, whatever you call it. How do you, when you grab a, a line from the movie, whatever, and you take that, that recording. Quote? Yeah. Well, you take the recording right. and you can, you can put, actually insert it into TV paint as a, uh, into the timeline and then animate to it. And I've done that, uh, for a couple of different shots from different movies. And it, you really, you grow that way. It's a, it's a great exercise. Uh, which stage of animation you enjoy the least? Example, rough, uh, the rough drawing in between, clean up, color. Um, my favorite is rough, because that's when you're discovering everything. Um, what I'm doing now is probably not one of my favorites. Uh, I give a shadow. Yeah, it's just it's okay. It's not bad. Um, in betweening really gets I get bored with in betweening because I'm just smoothing out the action that I already see in my head. Um, but yeah, the rough rough animation is my favorite, and then uh, you know getting that getting doing the in betweens, especially tight in betweens. That just uh, just drives me nuts. Squash, see how squashed he is. Oof. Any advice on how to finish a project while working up, while working a full time job already? No, I don't know what to tell you, man. That's a tough one. You know, it's, it's just, it's passion. It's passion. You know, when I was, uh, I still wanted to be a painter when I started at Disney. That was my my first passion was being a painter. And so I didn't want to be an animator. I wanted to be a painter. Um, and for me, animation, um, when I first got into animation, it was more, I didn't, there wasn't another job. So I wanted to try it out. Now, ultimately, I fell in love with animation. But even still, even when I was in love with animation, I still loved painting and I wanted to keep my painting career going. And so I, you know, I did nine, 10 hours, you know, a day at the studio working on my, uh, working on the movies, let's say it's Aladdin. And then, uh, I would come home and sit with Dustin and his sister when they were little. And, um, you know, we'd have dinner together. I'd play with them. I'd read them a story, take, give them their bath, put them to bed. And then at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock every night, I would start painting. And I did it because I loved it. And I would paint until, Midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I'd only get three or four hours a day in, but at least I got some painting in. And I was able to, you know, keep that career going. I was able to supply galleries with, you know, a few paintings here and there. But it's just, it's really, it's it's that labor of love. If it's something you really want to do, then you'll find the time to do it. I know it's tough, but that's just how it is. Did you see Glenn Keane's uh, short film this year, uh, Dear Basketball? I have. I've seen it several times. Yep. Um, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And Gorilla, I shed a tear when we saw, saw that CTN. Yeah, we, um, we saw it at CTN and then we got to, I got to briefly talk to Glenn and, um, it was great. Now Glenn, Glenn and I go back 30 years and, um, you know, I remember he he started teaching me animation when he was just starting on the on the Little Mermaid and just finishing up on Oliver and Company, and I'd be sitting in his office and we'd be going over drawings and I remember him thumbnailing, you know, working out the sketches, uh, some of the animation poses for um and and for Little Mermaid, Part of Your World, where she's singing about wanting to be part of his world, and um and him asking me about this pose or that pose, what I thought. And I was, you know, I was just this 20 year old kid and I just thought it was so cool that this guy really wanted my opinion on, on, uh, what, 
you know, what I thought about his poses. I thought it was really cool. That's the kind of guy Glenn is. It doesn't matter who you are. He wants, he'll listen to you. And uh, that really struck a nerve with me. It struck, it struck a chord with me, um, you know, for forever after that. Working three or four hours a night after animating all day long had to at least uh, burn you out. No, I didn't get burned out because I loved it. I didn't get burned out at all, to be honest with you. Um, there's that last bit. I, um, I, yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to explain. I really loved, um, and they were different enough. Um, I was really passionate about the paintings I was doing. And, um, and so it w they were completely different jobs. And if I didn't feel like painting, then I wouldn't paint, you know, but more, you know, more often than not, I, I, I painted and I really loved the results that I got. So there we go. Do you think Flush is a good animating program for, uh, for beginners? You know what? Um, I'm the wrong guy to ask. I've never done Flash. So I don't know. What inspires you to do these catchy paintings? That's, that's a good question. What inspires me to do these catchy paintings? Um, you know what? It's It can be anything. Sometimes I might be watching a TV show and go, oh, I've got an idea. It sparks an idea. Um... Other times, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I, I like stories. I like to try to tell stories um, with my paintings and with my images. And so that's where it comes from sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's, I don't, yeah, that's a good question. Well, that's an interesting one. How does studying anatomy uh, for an artist differ from studying anatomy uh, for a medical student? I think... Studying anatomy for a medical student, student, you need to be much more detailed and understand really all of the muscles. I think that's, you know, uh, or, or body parts, I should say, and the physio physiology of them and the, some of the, obviously the diseases and everything that can, that can happen. For an artist, it's really more about finding the rhythms. And, and I don't worry about every single muscle. I worry about how those muscles make the masses that they do and how those masses work, you know, in conjunction with the other masses and create the rhythms of the body, the flow, the, the poetry that you see, the visual poetry. And, um, so for me, that's probably the biggest difference. It's, uh, for an artist, I think it's less detailed. Can you do another, uh, super detailed creature design? Those are awesome. Yeah, I could do that. There we go. But not today. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Can you do a video where uh, you show your drawings from when you were about 20? Uh, sure, I can do that. I have to dig them up. Um, I am the worst, and Nick will tell you, my business partner, um, I'm the worst at keeping my stuff. Once I get a, a piece of art done, I really don't care about it anymore. Um, it, for me, it's the, it's the joy of making it. Once it's done, I don't I don't keep track of my art very well, and so I have to dig dig around. I've got some of the stuff you know I've done stuff on YouTube with some of the drawings from Disney uh, in my old days, but they're just stuck in boxes and I kind of forget where they are, and I've I've got to dig everything up. What equipment do I need to do your um, animation course? There we go. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Hey, it's Nick Birch. It's my business partner. Hello, Nick. We're live on YouTube. <laughs> He's saying hello, YouTube. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to put you on speaker. Okay, now you're live. Hi. Say say hi. Hi, YouTube. It's Nick. <laughs> You'll never I see his face. Well. <laughs> He's the make-believe character. <laughs> so, are you there? I will call you back. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, anyway, so he's he's madly getting ready for Hawaii, so he forgot that we were 
even live today. Yeah, so what equipment do you, uh, do you need uh, for your animation uh, lesson? Oh, what equipment do I need for, oh, for, my, for my course? Yeah, for your course. Oh, all you need is pencil and paper. You don't need to be digital because um, I'm, all I'm teaching in that course are the animation fundamentals and the things I think about. So if you want to animate on paper and follow along, it works great. Um, I'm using TV Paint only because it's easier to record the screen, but you don't need TV Paint in order to follow along with me. And that's how it is for most of my, most of my courses. You can follow along with paper or you can follow along digitally. How can I improve my art when I'm depressed uh, creatively? You know, that's a, you know, the whole art block issue. I get that question a lot. And it's, you know, the only thing you can do is break through it. You have to force yourself to keep going and you need to break through it. And eventually you will. Trust me, you will. And, you know, depression, well, you know, depression is a, is a tough thing to, to, to break. And, um, you know, some of us get severely depressed. Some of us are um, mildly depressed. But either way, it's going to affect your work. Um, I know when I went through some of the personal issues I went through in the past years, um, being able to create was almost impossible. But pushing through, focusing on trying to create, was able to focus my mind on something other than that depression. And it actually helped the depression. And the more I did it, it actually, I became more and more creative and I actually broke through because of that, that striving to, to break through. And so, um, it really gives you, it gives your mind something to focus on. And so, um, it's tough, but as long as you strive for it, uh, you'll do it. Uh, could you do a painting of a dog sometime? Sure. I can do a painting of a dog. Um, we'll do that uh, in an upcoming stream, for sure. Have you ever animated an owl before? I have... Let me think, actually. Have I animated an owl? I don't think you have. No. You know, one of, some of my favorite owl animation... Dog, oh I keep... Actually, I don't even know why I'm redrawing this. It's super tight in between. Um, the Secret of Nim, The Owl and the Secret of Nim, The Blind Owl. You know that one, Dustin? Say what? Remember the owl in the secret of Nim? The old blind oh, owl? Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. Remember the yes. knee of the stone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that was a really, really cool character. He he scared me when I was a when I was little, but, yeah. but nowadays That's like, the dad the dad Carradine. Cool. Huh? Uh, I can't remember his first name. It's the the father of the Carradines. Uh shoot, I can't remember. Oh, we loved how for for the owl, uh, for the great owl in um, in Nim, uh, the fact they turned uh, like some of the spider cobweb yeah. stuff, like he turned that, like they turned that into his like his own cape. Mm -hmm. And so when he flies off, it look, looks like he has a cape, but it's actually it's actually spider webs on his back. It's pretty cool. You can do anything with animation. That's one of the things I love about it. Whatever you can imagine, you can create. What do you think of Don Bluth's movies? I love them. I, I, I think he's done some great stuff, like Secret of Nim. I love Secret of Nim. Yeah, Secret of Nim was fantastic. And I actually just recently watched again um, uh, A Troll in New York. Oh, Central Park? Oh, Central Park, that's it. Troll in Central Park. Yeah. And... Um, that's another classic. You know, I don't know that I ever saw that. Really? Yeah. I remember watching it when I was little, and it scared the crap out of me, especially the the, the villain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I was just I was a real scaredy cat with with movies back in the day. But I actually just uh, watched it again um, the other day. I have it in my collection now. And were you scared? Nope. <laughs> I was I was very nostalgic. Yeah, I bet. Um, was all was all dogs go to heaven by yeah dog? yeah yeah another great one yep and, oh Charlie uh, oh Charlie <laughs> and then um what what else was there um 
American, was it American Tail? Yeah. No. Was it American Tail? Yeah. Uh, with with the mice with five hole. Yeah. That was that Bluth. Yeah. That was yeah. Bluth, wasn't it? Bluth. And um. Five hole goes also, west. Uh, five hole goes west, which is a sequel to that. Are we missing any questions? Um, I'll make sure we're not missing questions while, as we go down. Would you draw a poodle terrier dog? <laughs> <laughs> sure, at some point. Have you ever done stop motion? Uh, no, I never have. Uh, I've done stop motion with drawings. <laughs> well, but technically, no, I... you, you did a, um, direct Austin and I when we were little. Oh, yeah, that was with, funny. <laughs> with... It was a little little side fun thing, but yeah, that was fun. No, I haven't. I've had never done stop motion though. I would love to. Did Aaron Blaze draw for Land Before Time? I did not. Is that a, that's another blue? Is that Bluth or is that Universal? That Who's one. the? There's the one that's uh, We're Back. That was Spielberg, right? We're back. We're back. We're was it cool. Universal? I don't know who did that, but Land Before Time is Bluth, I think. We're, we're no, I didn't work on Land Before Time. We're back as the Tyrannosaurus. And... Oh, yeah. I remember. Okay, one more drawing in here. As he settles in. I'm in betweening all these on. Is Snow Bear partially inspired by the Snowman animated short? No, it's not. Um, a lot of people have asked that. No, Snow Bear is something that it's just we the way we were the way it came about was Nick and I wanted to do an animated short. I wanted to do something that we could handle on our own. So I wanted um, you know I wanted a single character. So I didn't want a lot of characters. So I just wanted a single character in a simple environment. So we started, and I wanted to do an animal. So I just kept thinking about it, and I thought, well, wait a minute, it's a, a polar bear, and the Arctic would kind of fit that bill. And immediately I started thinking about some of my own emotions and things I've gone through and um, some of the lonely times that I've gone through. And, and um, so I thought about this lonely polar bear by himself stuck up in the Arctic. And from that point, the story just kind of got rolling and we talked about it and it really kind of came together rather, rather quickly. We've done several versions of the story, but the core of it, this idea of this lonely polar bear being so lonely that he creates a snow bear that once we did when we discovered that that core of the story that's when we realized we kind of hit gold because we can that it really pulls on the heartstrings and you can have a lot of fun with it and so that's that's what we're focusing on any tips for animators that are working alone um the biggest tip i can give you is you know keep your project simple and you've really got to stay disciplined um you know i'm a I'm, I'm working alone. I've got Nick who, you know, he's out uh, in, in a different town. We work remotely from each other. Um, but it's, it's just, a, you know, it's just the, the, the two of us. And, and Dustin is helping out along the way too. And it really requires discipline. You got to get up and you got to do it every day and treat it like a job. Um, uh, and if you're working another job, then it makes it even harder. And you got you know, to find that time. So uh, that, that's the, that's tough. But I'm going to go through right now. I'm, to, I'm taking it up to this point, up to where he's he's kind of settled down. Boom. And I'm going to go ahead and color these in, starting, where are we at? Snow Bear is going to be seven minutes long, correct? Seven-ish. Seven-ish. Yeah. We're, that's, that's what we're shooting for. It might be a little longer. might be a little shorter. We don't know. So what I'm doing, I've got the paint bucket, and I'm going through and I'm filling in all of the areas that I've just animated, those color steps. Did you only animate animal characters at Disney? I know you said you uh, worked on Beast and Raja. Yeah, and I, I did Nala as well. Uh, but no, I worked on Jasmine. Um, I did a little bit of Aladdin himself. I worked on Pocahontas, the character. Really? You did Aladdin? Uh yeah. Yeah, I did. I did a few shots of Aladdin and uh, and Jasmine. Yeah. I thought I thought I thought you worked strictly on Raja. On no, no, Raja was a very small part in the movie, tiny part. So I I was able to finish Raja really quickly, 
And then I went on and helped with Jasmine and uh, did a few shots of Aladdin. Gotcha. Yeah. But what were the other other characters? Uh, uh, and Poco. The... Yeah, Yao, Yao, and the ancestors from Mulan, um, and then Pocahontas. So yeah, there's plenty of human characters in there. There we go. So this is where our, our shapes get really funky in here. Will the snow bear's name be Wilson? Wilson! That's a great idea. Wilson, I'm sorry. No, I, I think uh, I think we're gonna name him Glenn. Glenn. Yep. As in Glenn Keane. As in Glenn Keane, yeah. Nick and I talked about it, so we've decided to name him Glenn. In homage to my friend Glenn. <laughs> and uh, where will the short be released? Um, yeah, we keep getting that question. It's we don't know yet. We just need to get it done, and then uh, then we'll figure out where we're gonna do it. Uh, do you know uh, half? Uh, uh, short for Holland Animation Film Festival. And what do you think of it? I don't know it. Say it again, Dustin. Uh, Holland Animation Film Festival. I don't know it. I'd love to see it, though. So here we go. So I'm filling him in. Is there any advice you could give uh, to people who've lost confidence Whoops. in animating? Let's see. Where is is we got a break in here somewhere hold on one second um you know what I, I came very close to giving up in the early days of my animation career because i couldn't figure it out and um but glenn really convinced me to stick to it and and it's a simple piece of advice just stick to it right i mean it's but it's, it's I, and i know it's harder than that it's tough um but that's the best advice I can give you is just keep, keep at it, stick to it. Um, cause it's hard. Animation is hard. I don't care what people say. It's, it's, uh, you know, when people, when people don't know what animators do and they see it, they go, Oh, cool. You get to draw cartoons. It's really hard. You, it's a, it's a lot to figure out. Um, for me, I think animation is one of the harder jobs artistically in the art world because, you know, you're not, you don't just have to think about that, that flat piece of art in the drawing. You're thinking about physics. You're thinking about three dimensional forms. You're thinking, you're thinking left and right brain. You're thinking analytically and you're also thinking uh, artistically. And, um, and it's exhausting and it's hard and it's hard to meld those two together. But once you make that transition, once your brain starts to click, once it starts happening, um, I, say, I keep forgetting to close off that mouth. Then, then, it, and then it does that. It clicks, and um, it's a uh, it's a great feeling. Are you still visiting animation academies and giving readings, or giving a form of a presentation? I am uh, not as much. Uh, we're not going to be doing as much um, coming up. Ah, hold on one second. Sorry. We're not going to be doing quite as much uh, because we're focusing on Snow Bear. But um, there we go. But we will be doing some in the future. Yes. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. I'm trying to fill in this stuff. I just got my first charcoal set. Any tips for using charcoal? <laughs> it's funny you say that. I have a I have a whole course on my website. If you go to creatureartteacher.com, um, I've got what is it a six hour seven hour? I think I've got a seven hour course on drawing and charcoal. Sounds about right. Um, and yeah, it's got you know it's got all the supplies. I've got it's got everything you need. The biggest thing, the biggest tip I can give you as far as drawing and charcoal is don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to make a mess. Have some fun. Get in there. Get dirty. And, um, and you'll discover the kind of the limits of the medium. And that's the biggest thing. You know, every medium has its own advantages and disadvantages. And, and charcoal is no different. And there's things that make charcoal great and things that make charcoal difficult. And, uh, but if you check out this course, it kind of takes you, I take you through kind of my methods for, for drawing in charcoal. Um, but even if you don't get the course, just get in there 
and don't be afraid to draw. And the other great thing about charcoal, especially depending on the surface you're working on, if you're working on charcoal paper, this is great because you can lay down tones and then you can use your eraser. This is one of the biggest things that I love about charcoal is the ability to use your eraser as a drawing tool as well. You can get in there and pull out highlights and so you can go back and forth between your lights and darks and create some really beautiful forms that way. Did you ever attend Walt Stanchfield class at Disney or any other instructed life drawing at Disney? I sure did. I, I attended a lot of Walt Stanchfield classes um, back in the 80s. You know, Walt Stanchfield was, uh, he was an amazing teacher. And uh, he really taught us well in how to find the story in a pose, the gesture in a pose, and accentuate it. And uh, I learned a lot working under Walt. And um, he was a, he was a very kind gentleman as well are there many differences between tv paint 11 uh, 10 and 11 is the newest version uh, too much better uh i don't know I, I i wouldn't be able to go down the list right now of what's what makes one better than the other um uh i don't know uh right now uh th you'd have to look at the specs because i i haven't gone down i mean basically everything that i use that I need and TV paint was already in 10, but I do know they've added some, some of the paint things and things like that uh, they've added. So here, I just want to go in here real quick uh, without answering any questions real quick. I just want to show you this. So here he is all blurred. You know, that's what they look like blurred. And then this is it solid. And I've got to go through and animate all that out. bring that back so once again that's what the the color set will look like that's a little too uh, the opacity is too dark right now but I just wanted to show you you know kind of this is that process and some people have asked why don't I just take it into whatever other program and do it procedurally and this is not something you can do procedurally you have to animate this by hand you have to think you know these are flat drawings um, and they need to, but they need to be treated as if they're three-dimensional forms. And the only way to, to do that is, is where the human mind, the, the, you know, a computer doesn't know how to think about a flat drawing and see the roundness of, you know, the form of this bear. It, it doesn't, it doesn't understand it. And, uh, so it's up to me to go in and describe that form through these color separations. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. Now, if I go in, uh, if I knock this back. That's about the opacity that we're going to use on it. Have you ever animated a spider? You know what? I never have animated a spider. I'd like to. Um, and that reminds me. So that's about the opacity we're going to put on the bear, on the color separation. Um, it reminds me. There is a, uh, I am going to be putting out a course probably in the next year. It's going to be a little while. Uh, but it's not really a course. It's going to be a collection of animal locomotion. And I'm going to cover as many different types of locomotion in the animal world as I can, all the way from insects, uh, you know, butterflies, birds, uh, four-legged walks, human walks, um, you know, we do, and we talk about insects and arachnids, you know, six-legged walks, eight-legged walks, all of that, fish swimming, snake slithering, all that, and we're going to create a big collection of different locomotion that people will be able to pull from and use as reference. So um, that one I'm really excited about because I really, I love diving into those physics and the physiology and figuring that out and, and emulating it through drawings and putting it on paper. I think that's a lot of fun. That's right. <clears throat> when, I, when I saw that question, the first thing I thought of was uh, Lucas the spider. Oh yeah, little Lucas. I love Lucas. <laughs> My name's Lucas. <laughs> Too many eyeballs. <laughs> he's pretty. He's pretty charming. Yeah, absolutely love him. All right. So. So what's going to happen here is he's just going to push through and walk along. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with you guys. I just wanted you to see that um, you know this is what we're doing. I've got time for a couple more questions because we need to actually uh, run off. I need to run to the store and uh, do a few errands before uh, before this evening. Because I have to take off tomorrow. But I just wanted to share this with you guys and, and uh, show you what we're doing. I can't wait till we have this finished product. Um, 
uh, when I'm animating the shadows on, I'll bring you guys back in again, and you can see the process on that as well. But uh, do we have time? Do we have a couple more questions? Are there any uh, um, uh, upcoming films you would like to direct? Wow. There's a couple of films that I would like to direct. There's nothing upcoming that I'd like to direct. Um, it's funny. People ask me why I went away from directing. I don't think I've... I've never gone away from directing. I love directing films. Um, it's just finding the right it's finding story. the right it's finding the right one I've been in the last uh, six years I've been offered nine movies to direct and I've turned down all of them for a couple of you know, for a lot of different reasons one of the main reasons I love doing this I love I love this new niche that we've created uh, where I'm sharing education and experiences and you know our website and doing our short films and it's a very happy, creative life that we've been able to niche out for ourselves. And um, I love it so much that it's going to take a really great movie <laughs> to pull me away. So, um, yeah, so there's that. But uh, there's nothing There's nothing really on the horizon for me that I would love, that I'm, I'm dying to direct right now. Do you have any advice for keep sharpening your um, visualizing skill while your arm is healing from, in from an injury? Oh, uh, draw with your other hand. <laughs> I've done that. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. Can you see that scar right there? And I'm left-handed. I snapped my wrist and uh, uh, a few years ago, and so this was all cast. You know, it was all bound up in a cast. And um, but I still drew with it. it what, what, one of the great things about it was I because my arm was stationary. My shoulder wasn't though. And I was able to draw for my shoulder. It was a really great exercise. Um, but, you know, draw with your other hand. Draw with your feet. I don't know. <laughs> if you can. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, and the great thing about drawing with your other hand is that it's going to force you to, to really look at your subject. So, um, yeah, try that. Have you seen Disney's film Coco? What do you think of it? I haven't seen Coco yet, and I'm ashamed that I haven't seen it. Uh. I know. Kind of like how I'm feeling about Last Jedi. Yeah, I have. Yeah, Dustin hasn't seen Last Jedi. I've been so <laughs> caught up uh, with business and having to travel and uh, everything else. I haven't really been to the movies at all. So that's another thing I need to catch up on. One more question, and then we're gonna get hit the road. Um, how did you get a chance to work at Disney? Oh wow. Um, well, the way you know when the way I that's a good question. Uh, you got to re realize I worked at, I started at Disney in 1988 and back in the mid eighties and late eighties, uh, the animation world is nothing like what it is now. It is almost gone. There was no such thing. And a matter of fact, Disney, uh, in the mid eighties was getting, you know, early eighties was getting ready to close down their division because animation was dead. And so it wasn't until Oliver and company came along that it started to revitalize itself. I, I great mouse detective as well. Um, you know, I think once they hit the, the, the Black Cauldron, the Black Cauldron, in my opinion, was probably the low point in Disney's history of animating, uh, their animation history. Although, you know, it's not a horrible movie. Um, it was just rough. It was rough. And, uh, um, but then it started to turn around. You know, Michael Eisner came in in 1984 and, and wanted to shut the, that division down. And Roy Disney came along and said, no, you know, this is the heart and soul of the company. Let me take it over and try to turn it around. And so that's... That's that was the be, that was the the new beginning of kind of the renaissance of the '90s that we had, and that was in 1984. And so that's when you know the Great Mouse Detective came along, and then uh, in 1988 you had uh, um, um, Oliver and Company, and Great. so they started to create more of a demand. And then right about this time, they also were creating uh, MGM Studios in in Orlando as in you know part of the a, a new attraction at the uh, 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 well, Disney World in Orlando. And so part of that was they were creating an animation studio, a real working animation studio. And so they needed to staff it. And so that was the opportunity that I had. So I, it was 1988, and I was my, it was my second year in college, and I was looking for a job. I I'd wanted to work for National Geographic, but uh, they didn't have any staff positions. And so I saw that Disney was coming to, to Ringling, which is where I was going to school. And um, so I put together a portfolio. They were looking for interns, and they selected eight people from across the country, and I was lucky enough to be selected. And I went out there, and I learned animation under Glenn Keane. I didn't know anything about animation. I was an illustrator. I knew how to draw, 
but I didn't know anything about animation. And it was Glenn Keane that kind of lit this spark in me. And uh, he really showed me the possibilities of animation and the magic of it. And it really, it kind of put me under its spell right away. And I've never wanted to do anything else. Um, and so here we are 30, exactly 30 years later, and I'm still doing it and still loving it. And kind of, I've lived through that whole Renaissance that of, of the 2d era and I've seen it change and morph and, and, uh, but it's, um, like I said, back then it was a different, you know, th there weren't animation schools like there are now. And uh, there was only a couple here and there. There was Sheridan, there was, uh, uh, school of visual arts where we're doing a little bit. Cal arts was the main school. Uh, but other than that, you know, all the other art schools around the country were focused on illustration, painting, fine art, graphic design. Um, and it wasn't until animation made this big resurgence during the 90s when we were there that uh, art schools decided to start changing their curriculums. And so, you know, young people born during that era, have they really haven't known anything else. It was always animation. But, you know, when I started out, there was no such thing. So there's my long-winded version of how I got into animation. <laughs> but um, thanks a lot, you guys, for uh, coming and joining me today. And um, I'll be back at it next week. I'll be back with you guys uh, Tuesday on Facebook at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And Thursday, unless something ch Actually, Thursday, I'm flying to Nashville. So I'll be back here on Wednesday again. Uh, and uh, I'm going actually going to Nashville next Thursday to see my friend Tom Bancroft, who, if you guys have seen... Mulan and know the character of Mushu. He was the supervising animator of Mushu and we also worked together on The Lion King. He animated Simba with Mark Henn and uh, uh, we've done a lot of stuff together. We were at Disney for years and years and years and now he's teaching animation at Lipscomb University in Nashville and so I'm going to be out there next week uh, giving a little lecture on my career and doing some digital painting courses and that sort of thing. So um, so, uh, but I have to fly out on Thursday, so I'll be here on Wednesday. And, uh, and check out my website, creatureartteacher.com. You know, there's that person that asked about the charcoal. Plus, I've got animation courses on there. I've got animal drawing courses. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff on there. So go check it out. I really appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with me today. And uh, I love doing this stuff. This, for me, I look forward to doing this uh, every week. Um, I really love sharing my experiences and and hopefully helping you guys out if it, you know, if it helps even a little bit. And so until next week, go out and do something nice for somebody. Make the world a better place. Put some beauty back in the world. And I will talk to you, um, hopefully I'll see you Tuesday over on Facebook. If not, I'll see you Wednesday right back here. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. Dustin? Later. Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop.